living under the largest government in history, we have a seemingly never ending list of stuff to nullify. But we're starting to see some real progress in support of the Constitution and liberty. Okay, so nullification news report number one. Our friends at the Free State Project inform us over on the Twitter that the New Hampshire state legislature has formed a nullification caucus for the explicit purpose of reducing federal government influence in New Hampshire. If you would have told me 10 or 15 years ago that nullification would get so popular in my lifetime that there'd be a nullification caucus pretty much anywhere, I would have laughed you out of the room. But I'm glad I was wrong. The first meeting of the New Hampshire Nullification Caucus will be this weekend, and it seems like they started it at a good time. We're still early in the 2023 nullification season, but so far, it looks like New Hampshire has more support for more nullification-style legislation than any other state. Here are a few examples. HB 474 would ban state and local enforcement of all kinds of federal gun control, past, present, and future. It's up for a hearing on February 8th. Other bills taking on federal gun control include HB 305 and HB 512. Also up for a hearing on the 8th is HB 647 that does an end run around the Supreme Court-created doctrine of qualified immunity. Then the next day, there's a hearing on HB 135 and HB 593. The first would ban the use of no-knock warrants, one of the premier tools of the police state, thanks to a series of horrible Supreme Court opinions. The latter would start opting the state out of the Federal Equitable Sharing Asset Forfeiture Program. There are also a bunch of other bills taking on the unconstitutional war on drugs. Plus, the Defend the Guard Act should get a full House vote in the next couple weeks. Then there's HB 314, a really interesting privacy bill that would ban state and local government entities from acquiring, collecting, retaining, or using any personal information, basically a lot of stuff, of any individual residing in the state of New Hampshire without a warrant in most situations. And since data collected on a state level is generally shared with states around the country and federal agencies through fusion centers and ISC information sharing environment, banning the collection of it without a warrant also helps chip away at the national surveillance state. I'm sure we'll be reporting on plenty of nullification efforts in New Hampshire in the coming weeks and months, but make sure to follow the Free State Project for on-the-ground updates as well. That brings me to nullification news report number two. The Utah House unanimously passed House Bill 57 to expand on the already really good Electronic Information Privacy Act. HB 57 would add some pretty strong limits on geofence location tracking, requiring a warrant in most situations for reverse location information or through cell site simulators. Geofencing is a tool the founders would have called an illegal general warrant. They use location data to engage in massive fishing expeditions and subject hundreds, if not thousands, of innocent people to police location tracking. HB 57 now moves on to the state Senate for further consideration. And like New Hampshire, Utah is an interesting case study for strategy, but specifically on surveillance issues. In 2014, they passed the original Electronic Information Privacy Act and a second law to restrict surveillance by drones. In 2019, they built on this foundation to ban warrantless access to information stored in the cloud. In 2021, they again expanded the Electronic Information Privacy Act, this time to ensure police must get a warrant before accessing communication service provider networks. In 2022, they expanded on their drone restrictions to also include radar, sonar, infrared, or other remote sensing or detection technology. And if HB 57 gets signed into law this year, we'll see yet another small but important step forward for privacy and liberty.
Nothing helps us do this kind of work, the education and activism, more than the financial faith and support of our members. Over at 10thamendmentcenter.com slash members, you can join us for as little as two bucks a month. We also have annual five-year and lifetime options, and you can help us take a stand for the Constitution and liberty, whether the government likes it or not. So a big thanks goes out to you through the TAC membership program for sponsoring this episode of Nullification Movement News. Alrighty, welcome back to the show. Last up for today, Nullification News Report number three. If you're like me and millions of other people, you've probably noticed how hard price inflation is hitting staples like dairy and eggs. Last week, the Wyoming Senate took a step to do something about it. They passed SF-102 to expand the already awesome Wyoming Food Freedom Act. Under the original law passed in 2015, small-scale producers of many food products can sell direct without having to go through all kinds of state regulatory and licensing requirements, which of course can help expand options in the market, increasing quality, and reducing price. And now SF-102 could build on that by including eggs and dairy under the Wyoming Food Freedom Act. As Mike Meharry reports, opening up the market to more producers and sellers could help the people of Wyoming to get some relief from the money-printing frenzy of recent years. Like Utah, Wyoming is using an approach that builds on small victories one step at a time. This is exactly the strategy that Thomas Jefferson advised when he said the ground of liberty is to be gained by inches. Jefferson told us that we must be contented to secure what we can get from time to time and eternally press forward for what is yet to get. Step by step, person by person, brick by brick, state by state. We're building a strong foundation for the Constitution and liberty, whether the feds happen to like it or not. 